7. Allied Soldiers Mocking Hitler One of the most famous photographs from World War II features a group of Allied soldiers imitating Hitler on his balcony at the Reich Chancellery in Berlin. The photo was taken on July 6, 1945, by a British photographer named Fred Romage, who was covering the aftermath of the war that devastated Europe. The image captured the mood of triumph and mockery that the soldiers felt after beating the Nazi regime, which had waged a brutal war for six long years. It shows the American corporal Russell M. Aquad dressed as Hitler, with a British and Russian soldier at his sides, while other soldiers cheer from below the scene. The picture was taken about two months after Germany's unconditional surrender, and one month before the disastrous bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was a moment of celebration and relief for the men, who had endured many hardships and dangers in order to reach the heart of Nazi Germany and see it collapse. The balcony where the photo was taken was the same one where Hitler delivered his speeches and announced his plans for world dominance. The Reich Chancellery was Hitler's official home and headquarters, and it was designed by his favorite architect, Albert Speer. It reflected his grandiose vision of a greater German Reich. The building was heavily damaged by Allied bombing raids and Soviet artillery fire during the Battle of Berlin, and it was eventually destroyed altogether by the East German government in 1950. The image was widely circulated in newspapers and magazines around the world as a symbol of the Allied victory and the end of Hitler's reign of terror. It also showed the unity and cooperation of the Allied forces who formed an alliance to fight against the Nazis despite their vast political and ideological differences. The British, American, and Russian soldiers represented the three major powers that played a key role in defeating Germany on both fronts of the war. The photo remains one of the most memorable images from all of World War II, since it captures a historical moment that is both humorous and hard-hitting. It made fun of Hitler and his ideology, using his own balcony as a stage, and it shows how the soldiers celebrated their victory over a regime that caused so much death and suffering. The photo reminds us of the courage and sacrifice of the Allied forces, who fought for freedom and democracy of all people in World War II. 6. Nikolai Kuznetsov Nikolai Kuznetsov was a Soviet spy who secretly infiltrated the Nazi ranks during World War II and carried out multiple missions to help the Soviet war effort. He was born in 1911 into a peasant family in the Urals, and officially joined the Red Army in 1931. He was trained as a radio operator and a linguist. He mastered German, Polish, and Ukrainian. He also had a remarkable talent for disguise and impersonating others. In 1941, he was sent to Nazi-occupied Ukraine as a spy under the fake name of Paul Siebert, a German engineer. He managed to get a job at a German military factory and befriended a few high-ranking Nazi officers, including Erich Koch, the brutal governor of Ukraine. He gathered valuable information about Nazi plans and movements while he was there, and transmitted it all to Moscow. He also sabotaged Nazi buildings and assassinated Nazi officials without raising suspicion. One of his most famous exploits was the death of Wilhelm Kube, the governor of Belarus, in 1943. Kuznetsov hit a bomb under Kube's bed and escaped without getting detected. The bomb killed Kube and several other Nazis in his apartment. Kuznetsov also wanted to take out Kalk, but his mission was aborted at the last minute due to advancing Soviet troops. Kuznetsov's cover was eventually blown in 1944, when he was recognized by a former Soviet prisoner who had been tortured by the Nazi soldiers. He managed to not get captured and return to Soviet territory with the help of local supporters. He was awarded as the hero of the Soviet Union and continued his espionage work until the end of the war. After the fighting was over, Kuznetsov worked as a journalist and wrote several books about his experiences as a spy. He died in 1982, when he was 71 years old. The brave man is remembered as one of the most daring and successful spies in history, who risked his life to fight against Nazi fascism. 5. The Battle of Stalingrad the Battle of Stalingrad lasted from July 17, 1942 to February 2, 1943. 
and put the forces of Nazi Germany and its allies against the Soviet Union in Stalingrad, Russia. The battle was a major turning point in the war, since it stopped the German advance into the Soviet's territory and marked the beginning of the counteroffensive that eventually led to the fall of Berlin and the defeat of Nazi Germany as a whole. The battle started off with a German offensive, codenamed Operation Blue, that aimed to capture the oil fields off the Caucasus and Stalingrad, which was a symbolic target for both Hitler and Stalin. The Germans initially made quick progress, reaching the outskirts of Stalingrad by August 1942. But they faced fierce resistance from the Soviet defenders, who fought for every street, building, and factory in the city. The Soviets also launched counterattacks from across the Volga River, which supplied them with reinforcements and supplies. It didn't take long for the battle to turn into a brutal siege, as both sides suffered enormous casualties and endured the harsh winter in sub-zero conditions. The Germans tried breaking through the Soviet lines with repeated assaults, but failed to achieve their goal. Their enemy gradually gained the upper hand as they received more reinforcements and supplies, while the Germans became isolated and surrounded by a large Soviet encirclement, codenamed Operation Uranus, in November 1942. Despite everything, the Germans refused to surrender or retreat even though they were cut off from their supply lines and facing starvation. Hitler ordered his troops to fight to the last man standing, hoping for a relief force or an airlift that never came. In the meantime, the Soviets tightened their grip on the city, reducing the German-held territory to just a few small pockets. The final assault began on January 10, 1943, and ended with the capture of the German commander, Field Marshal Frederick Polis, and most of his leftover troops on February 2nd. Do you know any other facts about the Battle of Stalingrad? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the video so far. 4. German-Soviet Pact The German-Soviet Pact was a diplomatic agreement made by Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union that was signed on August 23, 1939, not long before the start of World War II. The pact had two main notions, a non-aggression clause, which pledged that both parties would refrain from attacking or helping any third party that went after the other, and a secret protocol, which divided Eastern Europe into spheres of influence, giving Germany a free hand to invade Poland, and the Soviet Union the right to annex scattered sections of Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, and Bessarabia. The pact was the result of mutual distrust and pragmatism between the totalitarian regimes. Germany wanted to avoid a two-front war with France and Britain in the west and the Soviet Union to its east, while the Soviet Union wanted to gain time and territory in order to strengthen its military and communist influence. Both sides also harbored ideological and historical animosity toward each other, but were willing to set aside their differences for strategic gains. The pact shocked and disappointed many countries, especially those that hoped for a collective security arrangement against the Nazis' rising aggression. The pact also allowed Germany to launch its invasion of Poland on September 1, 1939, without fear of Soviet intervention, triggering World War II. But the pact did not last very long, since Hitler violated it by invading the Soviets on June 22, 1941 through Operation Barbarossa. The Soviet Union then joined the Allied fighting against Germany until the end of the war. 3. Battle of Kursk The Battle of Kursk was a major World War II engagement between Germany and the Soviet Union in southwestern Russia during 1943. It was one of the largest tank battles in history and a decisive Soviet victory. The battle started off with a German offensive, Operation Citadel, which tried to eliminate the Soviet presence around the city of Kursk. The Germans planned to attack from the north and south at the same time, using their superior tanks and air power. They hoped to encircle and destroy the Soviet forces and regain the initiative on the Eastern Front. But the enemy anticipated the German move and prepared extensive defenses, including minefields, anti-tank guns, and dug-in tanks. 
They also had more troops, tanks, and planes at their disposal than the Germans. The Nazi attack started on July 5, 1943, but was met by fierce resistance from the Soviets. The Germans made some initial gains, but failed to achieve a strong breakthrough. The most intense fighting happened at Prokhorovka on July 12th, where hundreds of tanks clashed. Germany suffered heavy losses and was not able to overcome the Soviet numerical advantage. By July 16th, the German offensive was stopped, and the Soviets launched a series of counterattacks along the front. They pushed back the Germans and recaptured lost territory. They also threatened to encircle and destroy the remaining German forces, who were forced to withdraw and abandon their offensive position. The Battle of Kursk ended on August 23, 1943, after two long months of fighting. It was a strategic failure for the Germans, who lost many tanks, planes, and men. It was also a turning point on the Eastern Front, since it gave the Soviets the initiative to launch a series of offensives to drive the Germans out of Russia. The Battle of Kursk was a remarkable display of Soviet military strength and resilience. 2. The Red Orchestra During World War II, a group of communist spies with ties to the Soviet Union earned the nickname of the Red Orchestra. The organization served as a resistance movement against Nazis, while also providing intelligence to Soviet authorities. The Red Orchestra ran for three years, rescuing a number of political prisoners, largely communist dissidents, and sneaking important German documents and secrets to the Allied forces. The Red Orchestra contained a few units, including the schluz boysen harnack Group, the Red Three, and the Trepper Unit, which were all loosely organized. In the middle of the 1930s, Leopold Trepper, a Polish Jew, joined the Soviet Red Army Intelligence Agency. Later on, he was given a job with the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs, NKVD, the Soviet Union's nascent equivalent of the CIA. Trepper built a circle of leftist political activists and communist supporters before World War II broke out in Europe. Trepper also converted his network into a spy ring in 1939, when the war broke out, with hopes of providing the Soviet army with information that would help them win the war. As soon as the Nazis controlled France, Belgium, Holland, and neutral Switzerland, Trepper's network quickly established functioning divisions in each of those countries. Agents of the Red Orchestra successfully got access to the Obwehr headquarters of the German military intelligence in Paris to intercept phone calls. Agents intercepted intelligence data transferred straight from Berlin as a result. Yet the Swiss ring, known as Lucy, was responsible for the organization's greatest coup. Information on the German invasion strategy for the Soviet Union was leaked to the Red Orchestra Group. The Soviet Army and administration were given access to these documents, which also contained the suggested time for the operation to start, but they were completely shrugged off. As multiple Red Orchestra spies were detained in Belgium in 1942, Trepper's network disintegrated. Trepper himself was apprehended in Paris by the Gestapo later that year. Several Red Orchestra members were tracked down by the Gestapo and executed. During the war, several rings stayed operational on a reduced scale. By the time Trepper fled from Nazi captivity and tried to reassemble his organization in 1944, the Red Orchestra network had entirely collapsed. 1. Battle of Berlin one of the last battles of World War II in Europe was the Battle of Berlin. The Soviet Red Army, avenging the suffering of their people since 1941, won the battle, which lasted from April 20th to May 2nd, 1945, and culminated with the surrender of Berlin. With over 2 million soldiers, 6,250 tanks, 7,500 planes, and 41,600 artillery pieces gathered outside of Berlin, the Union prepared one of the biggest military force concentrations ever seen. Stragglers, militia, and Hitler Youth made up the majority of the outnumbered German defenses. The Soviet invasion could not be stopped, despite their efforts. Adolf Hitler committed suicide on April 30th as a result of this battle, which led to the Nazi army's defeat. While it was a great triumph for the Soviet Union and the Allies, both sides suffered greatly. In addition to the 
280,000 injured soldiers, around 81,000 Soviets died. Around 100,000 Germans were killed, 220,000 were injured, and 480,000 were taken prisoner after the battle. 22,000 Berliners were also killed. The Eastern Front and all of Europe's warfare were put to an end by the Battle of Berlin. On May 7th, Germany surrendered after suffering extreme military losses and the death of Hitler. A medal honoring the conquest of Berlin was presented to over a million Russian soldiers. There are several memorials and monuments throughout Berlin honoring these fallen troops. There are still some houses in the city with unrepaired bullet holes from the battle as well. Thanks for watching. Which World War II battle is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe.